All right, the next big droid build is officially underway. Over the last several weeks, I've made a lot of progress. I've ordered a lot of hardware, and I've built quite a few drive units. I've decided that my next droid is going to be B2 Emo from Andor. It's one of the latest creations from Michael Baddeley, and it's going to be quite a departure from what I did with R2-D2. Uh, there's a lot of things about this build that have me pretty excited. It's got a lot of things that are going to be different than R2. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the build and show you what I've done so far. So B2 is the latest creation from Michael Baddeley. He's had some uh, design help from other patron builders um, in order to develop the prototype. And what you see here is the first official release of the V2 version of B2. Um, as you can tell, it's very different from R2 in a lot of ways. Um, most notably is there's a lot of non-3D printed parts here. This is the first part of the build, which is the base frame. And you'll notice that most of it is uh, built out of 2020 aluminum extrusions and these big beefy linear rails along the side. Uh, the gears and uh, some of the brackets are 3D printed parts, but for the most part, um, this portion of the build, uh, this rigid frame, which forms the literal backbone of B2, is, is almost all metal. So what we see from this angle here, this is the frame actually turned upside down. Um, the drive units will attach to the ends of these rails here. And if you're familiar with B2, you'll know that he has a cool ability to be able to uh, expand or contract his wheelbase. And that's what this mechanism here uh, allows us to do. I've got the servo tester hooked up to it. And uh, you can see that with the mechanism here, you've got the ability to be able to expand and contract using a really big beefy servo in the middle there. So the, uh, the first part of the build is uh, essentially creating this frame that's going to hold the drive units. And I would also like to add that uh, the, the precision of the 3D printed parts it, so far has been remarkable. Um, we have these uh, V-slot aluminum extrusions and there are 3D printed parts that are designed to fit exactly in those cavities. And uh, I have to say that the, uh, the fitment of the pieces has been extraordinary. I haven't had to sand anything. I printed the parts out and they have slotted exactly into the extrusions. Um, it's actually been quite remarkable to be able to put together. Um, you do have to uh, have some metal working tools at your disposal. Um, I did find that the ends of these linear rails uh, were, would not allow the extrusions to sit flush. I had to grind those ends off a good bit. Uh, you do have to drill holes in the, uh, these aluminum, uh, these, these linear rails. And so you need to be able to be precise with that. So a, a good center punch is an absolute must if you don't have access to a drill press for uh, really precise drilling. Uh, but uh, overall, the assembly here uh, went really well. It is exactly square. Um, I made sure that everything was very flush and extremely tight. And uh, this is a very, very rigid uh, base for me to work from. So now let's uh, go take a look at the drives. So here you see the four drive units for B2. Um, none of these are actually 100% complete. I still have a few things to add to them, uh, but they're probably 75-80% uh, done. Uh, and right away you can see one of the big differences, uh, or one of the things that makes uh, B2 a little bit unique. Uh, he has a mechanum wheel arrangement. So uh, mechanum wheels uh, work in uh, basically sets of four. There's two right-hand wheels and two left-hand wheels. Uh, you can tell which one is which. The wheels that go on the right, uh, if you're looking at the rollers, they slant upward and to the right. Those are the right wheels. And if the wheels, the rollers, slant upwards and to the left, then that's a left wheel. And the way it works is the uh, opposite corner drives are basically the same drive. They're just uh, turned around. So 
Uh, what I did for, for my own sanity's sake was I printed one set of drives in gray and another one in black so I wouldn't get the parts confused. So if you're familiar with B2, then you'll know the other cool feature he has with his drives is the ability to raise and lower his drives ind independently. And um, that's achieved using a pretty straightforward linkage to a big beefy servo. There's gonna be some added strain relief that is uh, I haven't added yet to any of the drives. Uh, I'll wait until everything is built so I can tension it appropriately for the weight of, uh, of the finished droid. Uh, but, uh, but that should work out pretty well. Uh, one other little modification that I did is uh, the linkages are these little uh, parts printed out of, out of flex. And uh, in order to help reduce the wear, I did insert some brass tubing as uh, bushings in there um, and that's you know it was pretty straightforward uh, if it still allows the m3 hardware to uh, connect that but it should help this uh, part last a lot longer so like with the uh, the main frame there is definitely a lot of uh, work that needs to be done in order to make sure that the sliding mechanism is is really smooth uh, it did take a little bit of time to uh, uh, refine the, the, the fit of these uh, steel rods. These are M6 rods, but I did find that I had to polish them a good bit and they actually were a little bit too long. I had to shorten them a little bit. But um, but yeah, overall it went together really well. The uh, drives themselves make use of Sonic hubs, which is one of the new standards uh, that uh, the battery droids have adopted. And we've got some 24 volt Pololu motors in here that should be uh, ample for the power and for the drive. So the next step for me, uh, once I finish uh, adding in the linkages for these drives, will be to attach the drives to the frame. So that brings us to uh, where this project is currently. Uh, so let's talk briefly about some of the other things that are gonna be kind of cool about this project that's uh, very different from R2. Um, First of all, electronics. Uh, electronics are gonna be done a lot sooner on this particular build. Uh, the Baddeley R2-D2 is essentially a monocoque design, meaning that there's very little distinction between the frame and the skins. They basically are one and the same. Uh, this, on the other hand, is uh, built very much as a central skeleton with uh, a whole lot of mechanism uh, with sort of modular skins and uh, body panels uh, attached after the fact. So I should be able to build this out completely and have it uh, connected and animated and driving uh, before I even have to bother with the skins. Uh, another nice benefit to that is I don't have to sand and prime and paint and finish all of these parts. Uh, what you're seeing here, none of these parts have been sanded. These are all straight off the printer. Um, and uh, it's kind of a nice thing. It allows me to just build. And uh, if you happen to see the video I did about the Prusa XL, uh, it's exactly what I wanted out of a printer. Was I want the printer to be a tool. I want to be able to have more fun doing this stuff. And so far, that's exactly what I've gotten out of this project. It's been, it's been a blast so far. And then in terms of control systems, uh, this is going to be the other big change for me. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be going with the Kyber system, uh, which means that I'm going to be diving into RC control, and that's something that I haven't done uh, ever. And uh, so I am really excited about that. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I'm also starting to look into battery options. I don't think Dakota Lithium LiPo batteries are going to fit in this guy. Um, I'm thinking I might actually have to go the LiPo way. Um, so that's also a little bit of uh, uh, of a making me a little bit nervous but um you know i'll uh, i'll do my research and and uh, i'll just have to learn how to deal with it so um that should be that should be a really really fun process and uh, i'm anxious to get this guy up and running well that pretty much covers uh how things have progressed so far uh i do still have uh boxes of of parts uh, at least for a little bit more of the build um, I am anxiously awaiting for uh, more of the instructions and uh, hardware requirements to be posted, and uh, hopefully we'll start uh, acquiring some of the uh, other electronic components soon. 
Um, I will uh, just kind of post videos as I go. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's gonna stick to any sort of schedule. Um, I also do have a couple more things I wanna do for R2. Uh, I'm not gonna forget about him, that's for sure. But um, anyway, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.